What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hello fellow streamers, this is Catching Fair 3 with some more I Love You Colonel Sanders, the KFC Dating Simulator. Let's get back into it. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your frontal attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away, and then you die, and now you're a ghost. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're, we're to, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. That's everybody, even the, even the ghost. You w awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were, were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling thinking about the secret you discovered. Well, tasting girl. Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used beef. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might, like, clank... Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him, like, like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a total sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular. That he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible that he himself rode in on. Rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in, in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it would be best if you took it slow with this new boy like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend university? Look so? You're... you're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a secret, a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A, a, a secret I ingredient? Yeah, I just said that, a secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices, secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He thought it, he said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with them, a very strange film came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever! Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it would be much to use, much use to anyone. <coughs> <coughs> <Fibber. coughs> please, please, please! 
It mean the world to me. No one else, no one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. Make up a fake ingredient, duh. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know how about. It was Eye of Newt. I know, sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow! Her eyes light up imagining such a thing and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in, cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh no, yeah, I had that. Why is he on a horse? And why are the horse's eyes completely black except for like right there? It's Colonel Sanders, he's arriving at school. Uh, run to him. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel! <laughs> However, your sudden movement surprises the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. Ooh! The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. The darkness, you see a vision. Oh, Scott, I am here to deliver you a message. Not this guy! It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me! All you need to do is repeat my name three times. That name is... But before you can continue, you, su you suddenly awake. Oh, jeez! You awake to find Colonel Sanders turning to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices, or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Ew. Uh... Compliment to craftsmanship. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. One thing is for sure that Colonel said it is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, Experiment with, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one, I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Tell him to stop acting immature. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? You immediately dress the rivals down for the immature behavior. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your, your encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley. Amelia elbows Van Van who has the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. Notice that they haven't been just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. <laughs> but you can dig in any further your... Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. 
Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzzzwomp. Who do you think you're talking to? You've never heard of such language, not even from a stand mixer. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders! These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Springle arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, yet he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. You try to give Springles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry, I get a little worked up if people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. Springles stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Springles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy! Down! Off open! That command said by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I <laughs> got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken! Bum, bum, bum! You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 17, 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to you, Sprinkles is holding a train of food in front of you. Well, Scott, naturally this appears to you, to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? A simmering pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in the most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. Oh, God. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend. Oh, this guy again? <laughs> I'm here to give you an important message. Oh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I've got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man! You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. Oh, wait, sorry. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the caf cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared Th via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the- I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Scott. I'll be watching your performance. 
Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps and surely he'll put a stop to this moment. Not now, students. Please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports in court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until you turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me in case anyone was wondering. I hope his message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast, if the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh, that's wrong. Shit. What were you thinking, Scott? Get your head in the game. You're going to need this se to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Uh, 11. That's right. You might not all know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Because that's a tail wagging sound, but like he'd be like, Pfft, or whatever, you know. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Gratitude. That's right, you must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy, so where does it come from? Ah, shit. This is a horrible time to start forgetting important things. Next question. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. Or not. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Is this the end? Yep. Game over. Oh, I'll try again. Shit. Now I have to try again. Seriously. Before anyone. Okay, whatever. I know this already. Stop up and tell them you're on. A hundred degrees Fahrenheit. That's wrong. It's Celsius. God damn it. Uh, eleven herbs and spices. Uh, gratitude. Small town. That's right. Okay. This is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Oh! You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Bubbling. Damn it. It's silence. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. You know it's Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe, I believe in you, Scott. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. Uh, how many spoonful? Uh, what were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. <laughs> You're stranded on a desert island with only one desert cookbook. Dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk! I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Sorry, I forgot the question. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? Woo -hoo! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ah, <gasps> uh, yikes! I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Ooh. You mean not have any hands? But Scott does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Scott, no! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. 
What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone, stop what you're doing right now. The battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Scott's injury. Yeah, see that face? See that face? Fucking bitch. Stop trying to impress my colonel. He's my colonel. He's going to prom with me. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, basically, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under the white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Scott to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. It's a honeycomb? I don't know what the rest is. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette. I thought that, I thought that was a honeycomb. A top, oh, okay, <laughs> it is a honeycomb. A top a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, or nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate mm. sauce. Simplicity is in your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, Hugh, heh <laughs> As he places the sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalized rage. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire, fire and turn to ash and they fall off of your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you. A storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. Let me check something real quick. Okay. If you like this video, leave a like, comment down below if you want to see more or what you want me to do next. Subscribe if you're new and may the odds be ever in your favor. And if I see one comment about me being a furry because of my dog noises, no, whatever, I don't care.